Hey, what is up guys, MKBHD here, and a proof of concept is a demonstration whose purpose is to verify that some concept or theory has the potential of being used. This is the Hasselblad TrueZoom mod, and it is definitely a proof of concept. It's like the textbook definition of one. So Moto mods are already an awesome idea in my opinion. There are smartphones that don't sacrifice much in the way of design, and then just use some pins and magnets to connect to a store of accessories that add functionality for specialty use cases. I mentioned it in my full Moto Z review that even though there's only a couple of them, Moto mods are easily my favorite attempt at the whole modular smartphone thing. They just work. You just smack it on the back of the phone. There's no rebooting. There's no tools, no screws, no extra thought required. You just take what you want to attach to the phone, smack it on the back, and it just works. So why not another one? Why not a camera one? So Moto, or Lenovo, I guess, partnered with Hasselblad to create this the Hasselblad TrueZoom mod, an attachable camera replacement, 12 megapixel sensor, 10 times optical zoom, something like a 25 millimeter to 250 millimeter equivalent, toss in a Xenon flash, a dedicated two-stage shutter button, and optical image stabilization for photos, and have them all in one package that can be snapped onto your phone. Seems awesome, right? Just take all the things that you can't put in a smartphone because it's too thin, and put them in a mod to take advantage of the extra space Boom, done, ship it. And I agree, it's a great idea, but the one little problem is it's not that good. Like, the camera itself isn't very good. Now, don't get me wrong, it still does what it says, which is zoom. That's what smartphone cameras are not very good at doing, is zooming in and out. But that's about the only thing that it does better. Going through the shots taken on the true zoom camera, you'll see a lot of things. First off, the colors and exposure are pretty inconsistent, but overall it's kind of underexposed and a little oversaturated. But then also you'll notice everything is soft. The pictures are lacking in detail from corner to corner and even the center. I ended up like wiping off the lens on my shirt because I thought I had like something on the glass, but it just didn't. It's just soft in almost every photo. And then also in almost every photo, no matter the lighting conditions, it just had way more noise and grain than it should which is strange, even outdoors there was noise in the shots. In fact, the more I shot with this, the more I noticed that the camera that's already on the Moto Z is actually better than the one that's in the mod. The true zoom goes from the 25 millimeter equivalent to a roughly 250 millimeter telephoto equivalent, which is a lot of optical zoom, and you can see it does it also very quickly. But something to notice is the aperture is fixed while you do it from f3.5 all the way wide to f6.5. So it's not very wide aperture, and that prevents you from getting a shallow depth of field with your close-up subjects, and it's not letting a lot of light in, which is why it has to bump up the ISO so much to make up for it. The phone's fixed aperture is f2.0, so the true zoom is actually a worse low-light camera, letting in way less light, and that explains also why there's so much more noise in every shot. All of this, plus there's no battery built into this mod, like there are in pretty much all the others, so it can actually draw a lot of power from the phone. Plus it has a very small, not exactly ergonomic grip, especially for a Hasselblad, and it has this wiggly shutter button and is just generally a plasticky build quality all around. And then to top it all off, it maxes out at 1080p video at 30 FPS, which is a bummer because pretty much every smartphone camera coming out nowadays, including the ones that this is supposed to be replacing, can shoot 4K video and even slow motion at 1080p. So the only thing that this does better than the stock camera it's replacing is optical zoom. Obviously digital zoom in smartphones is really bad. It's literally just zooming in on the picture you already have, but optical zoom can be much more powerful, but how many people are after that in a smartphone? I don't really know. So for 250 bucks, which is what this thing costs right now, yeah, this is probably not worth it for most people. If you're a smartphone or mobile photo enthusiast, just use the camera that's already on the phone, it's better. And if you're more of a mobile camera person, you can get a point and shoot for the same money that takes better pictures than this. I'll leave one link below, that looks like way better. But you know what this all comes down to again, now that we have summarized it all, is proof of concept. In 1997, Pixar made a five minute short film called Jerry's Game that used new techniques for animating cloth and human facial expression. So it was the first Pixar production to have a human main character. It wasn't the best thing they've ever made, you might not have heard of it, but these new animation techniques graduated up to be used in 1999 in the full length Toy Story 2. You've heard of Toy Story 2, it's really good. So look, I'm thoroughly convinced still that Moto Mods are the best execution of this modular concept as far as smartphones go, and I think they're really good, they're really easy, and I think they have a future. But right now, they're still super generation one. It's the first year we're doing this, so they're not that great. 
but maybe if we give it some time, we'll get our Toy Story 2. But until then, don't buy this. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.